starting in the back of the church for anyone who would like to enter in with us in our procession you're welcome to come back Anybody else? We'll wait one more minute before we begin. Let's go ahead and stand. <clears throat> Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of the Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, Why are you untying it? You will answer, The Master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything, just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The Master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said and replied, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Please join in singing the processional hymn found in the Red Worship, 483, All Glory, Loud, and Honor, 483.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that it shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. The psalm can be found in the Blue Gather 28. My God, my God, 2 8. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was the fo in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, 
becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory to you. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup gave thanks, and said, Take this, and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves, who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. 
But I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny me three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, nothing. They replied. He said to them, But now, one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack. And one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer, he returned to his disciples. He found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man? A kiss. His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and the temple guards and elders who had come for him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him, for he also is a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is that that struck you? And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. 
and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by, accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him, him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have found, not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man. Release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Instead, weep for, instead, weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed, the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. 
As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we are entering into this beautiful time in the church. We're entering into this holy week, which of course is the holiest week in, in the life of our church. And this is our week. This is our week to remember who we are and to experience it most deeply and profoundly. The, of course, the Jewish people also have a similar feast when they get together and call to mind again the great work that God had done in the Exodus when Moses led the Israel of Israelite people out of Egypt into the Promised Land. And so when they recall that, that day, they ask, what's different about this night? And they recall the whole story and live it together once again. We, as Catholics, of course, we remember our story every single Sunday when we celebrate the Eucharist, recalling to mind all that Christ has done for us and receiving from it the gift of the Eucharist. But this is our week to do it in a more intense way, to allow ourselves not just to recall with our minds, but to experience it, to taste it, to share the story, but also to enter more deeply into this mystery. And so I want to speak just a little bit 
into what that might look like, what it's been traditionally and perhaps new ways we can do that. So of course for these first couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have some days when there's not a lot going on liturgically, although of course we'll have Mass in the morning. But in a way, these are the days of preparation before the great days, the great Shridra, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday. And that might look like a number of things, perhaps just taking a few extra moments in quiet, maybe more slowly reading through the Gospel we just heard today, tasting again. I know many of us have been going through the Passion narrative in our Bible study this year, and we've all learned that there is so much more happening in that, in that Passion narrative than we before realized. How beautiful just to take these next couple of days, some moments slowly to read through. Or maybe it's just making the preparations literally for the coming celebration. And so we, we enter into a Holy Thursday, which for us is so important. There are those three main things that happen that night on Holy Thursday, where the, the where we experience the institution of the Eucharist, that great gift that we have as Catholics, that the Second Vatican Council has described for us as the source and summit of our Christian life, is this gift of the Eucharist, where Jesus also instituted, instituted the priesthood and then also gave us the commandment that we must serve one another, serve in the way that Jesus gave us served us. So it's a profoundly important event. But there's a number of ways of entering into that evening. Maybe that night, that night is a great night to have a larger meal with your family. So I know some families who have lamb, that sometimes is a little bit expensive. But just to have a meal with one another, to be joined together, as you prepare to enter into the rest of these, these days. It's also a beautiful time at some point to literally wash one another's feet within your family. We are meant to be reminded that that call of charity, of service of one another, is not only for everyone out there, but it's meant to be lived principally and first in our own families, where we learn to put the other one first, always. There could be even a healing aspect to that, to that saying again, I want to serve you. And then, of course, I want to invite everyone to come here, if you're able, for our service that evening. That's at, it starts at 7 p.m., and there, of course, we will remember what Jesus has done in the institution of the Eucharist and in the priesthood and in the giving us that great mandate to serve one another. But it will go further because that evening we'll, we will repose the Blessed Sacrament in a special place. We'll be reposing it over in, over in Fireside Hall. And there will be a time where we can just spend time with the Lord throughout the evening. We're going to be leaving that little side chapel open all the way through the night. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you feel the impulse to come and pray, there's a place for you here. It follows that invitation of Jesus to come away, pray, stay awake, wait with me. Could you not wait one hour? And so the the Church provides us that opportunity this Holy Thursday, not only in simple, but literally to be with Him in the Eucharist throughout this evening. And if that's true here at this church, but it's true in all of our Catholic churches in the area. So if there's one closer to you, just check their, their times to make sure that they're, they're doing it at the same time. But they'll be doing it this Thursday evening. Then, of course, we have Good Friday, the day we live again. All that Christ has done for us by taking upon himself 
all of our sin, the effects of sin, making even our crosses now beneficial for all of us, because we know that's the place where Christ lives, and we can enter in more deeply there to that. Our, I know many of us go to that, to that service at that 5 o'clock that day, profoundly beautiful and deeply moving. So I'd love to invite everyone for us to come to our service at 5 o'clock that evening. But there are also other ways to enter into that day if you're not able to come to the, ev to the evening service. We know, of course, that day is a day of fasting and a day of um, abstinence. But it's also traditionally been known as a day when we're meant to be quiet, especially during the time of 9, between 9 and 3 p.m., where we remember that time when Jesus was crucified, of course, finally passing away at 3 p.m. So it's a time to shut off the phone for a while, time to turn off the screens, a time for a little more quiet reflection, Maybe if you're still working that day, just to take a, a quiet moment during the day to recall the gift of what Jesus has done for you. It's a beautiful way to enter in more deeply on that day. And then we have Holy Saturday. And sometimes I, I think that Holy Saturday gets lost on us a little bit because there's not a lot happening on Holy Saturday morning. But tradition has given us that that Holy Saturday is also meant today to be a day of quiet. Because even though Jesus is buried in the tomb, he is doing something. And we're meant to be attentive to that that day. And the church also asks us if we're able to continue our fast. So, of course, the, the traditional fast is two very small meals and one normal sized meal. And so we can continue those two small meals on Holy Saturday as a way of entering into what the Lord has done, what He is doing for us. There's an ancient homily that says that during this time, He's going into hell and crying out to all of those there, come, of course, hell being that place of limbo where all of those who had gone before He was there, come, this, you were not made for this. Come, rise now with me. And then, of course, we have our great Easter Vigil. And if you've never been, this is, a, this is one of the celebrations you want to be at. And why do we, why is this is our highest of all of the celebrations we have? This is the highest celebration that we have. And why is it? It's because we're entering into the night, the very night of resurrection. It's, the, it's clear that the resurrection happened sometime in the evening when it was dark. That's when the light finally burst forth. On Easter Sunday we're coming and it's, the resurrection has already happened. But at the Easter Vigil we're going to encounter the resurrection to be there at the very moment. And so we gather it in the nighttime, we carry candles and vigil, we listen to all of salvation history, the lights are finally turned on, we sing the Gloria and enter into that beauty of the resurrection. Traditionally, we'll have baptisms, bringing people in, no baptisms this year, but lots of sacraments are celebrated. It's the great feast of our Catholic life. And so I encourage all of us to go it's a longer celebration, but Easter is worth celebrating a little bit longer. And then, of course, we have Easter Sunday, where we walk with Mary and the other disciples as they encounter the empty tomb. And we rejoice through faith that we know that the Lord truly has risen. So that's our gift. This is the this is what we are remembering this week, but we're not just calling it to mind. We are living it and tasting it anew. So I invite all of us to enter in deeply to this Our Holy Week.
Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. For the Church, that our participation in the liturgies of this holiest week of the year may renew in us our faith, our trust, and our hope in the Lord, inspiring us to carry the message to the world through what we say and do, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to religious persecution from the Holy Land to the ends of the earth, so that the people everywhere may worship free from fear and intimidation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the death penalty everywhere, that all criminals may be given the opportunity for repentance rehabilitation and redemption, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be initiated into the church this year, especially our own catechumens, Cheryl, Alyssa, Phil, Stephanie, and Chris, that their faith may be deepened as they experience the blessings of Holy Week, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may imitate our Lord, accepting our share in his cross and serving others with humility and gratitude, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish, and for those who are sick or homebound, for those who have died, for Pete Truax, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Lead us as we walk the way of the cross with your Son. May our acceptance of our crosses and our service to others struggling with their crosses deepen our joy in the new life offered to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The preparatory hymn is in the Red Worship 482, The Tramp of Soldiers' Marching Feet, 482. Thank you. Draws near 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for the cause of the Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice, made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Oh. Uh-huh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is in the Blue Gather, 284, Jerusalem, my destiny, 284. i 
spirit's lessicons have courted me. Last night as I lay sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing and ever as they sang, thought the voice of angels from heaven in answering. I thought the Jerusalem, Jerusalem. 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite forward Alyssa Quiddick for a quick announcement about our Totus Tuus coming up this summer. Good morning, my name is Alyssa Quiddick and I'm here to talk to you about Totus Tuus, a Catholic summer youth program that helps children and youth to grow in their understanding of and strengthen, strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ. This fun week will be filled with games, learning, and more. This summer program is being offered here at IHM for kids going into grades first grade all the way up through 12th grade during the week of July 17th to July 22nd. The elementary school age program is offered during the day, and the middle school and high school program is in the evenings. Registration begins April 19th, and there is a special early bird discount that you can take advantage of. We encourage all parishioners, keyword all parishioners, to consider volunteering in any way that you can during this amazing week to support our future generation of the church. The smiles and laughter that this program pro provided for our youth last summer was incredible, and I am looking forward to another fantastic week of Totus Tuus here at IHM, but this is only possible with your help. During your car ride home today, I encourage you to talk to your family and loved ones about volunteering at Totus Tuus this week in July as we continue to support the next generation of our church. More information will be in our bulletin and our web website to come. Thank you for talking to your loved ones to support our next generation of our church. Have a great day. And I want to thank Alyssa and then all of those who work to make our Totus Tuus summer program so awesome and so life-giving for our parish. As Alyssa, Alyssa mentioned, I just want to underscore that again. It is a whole parish event. So look into it and lock off your calendar so we're, we're, we're all involved that, that week. Just a couple other announcements. We're entering into Holy Week, so there will be no 9.15 a.m. Mass on Thursday, Friday, but we will have morning prayer those days on Thursday, Friday, and then on Saturday. And anyone's welcome to come. And then our full Holy Week schedule, I mentioned it in the homily today, but it's also in our bulletin. All families today are invited to our annual Easter egg hunt after the 10.30 a.m. Mass. And that's going to be a lot of fun. There will be a light lunch after Mass, and the hunt will begin after lunch. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is in the Blue Gather 294, Ride On, Jesus Ride, 294. Jesus, right. 